last week we talked about the secret of dying empty. And the secret was uh, prayer. Somebody say prayer. She gave us prayer. And now that Thanksgiving is over, I know that you have a lot to work off. Amen. Amen. You have a lot to work off. And so it is time to pray. Do you know that prayer is exercise? Prayer is work. <laughs> you pray in your ribs. And you're like, if you want six-pack abs, pray. Makabae, <laughs> pray. Travail in prayer, and your abs will take shape. Hallelujah. Keep walking up and down, and your Fitbit will thank you. <laughs> Amen. But the secret of dying empty is prayer, because prayer, prayer is what empowers you and fills you up so that you can pour out. Somebody say amen. And I, I, I just want to remind you of this, that the greatest attack of the enemy against you is not the attacks against your body or anything. The greatest attacks of the enemy against you is the attack against your prayer life. Don't go and say, you know what, the devil is attacking me so I can pray. No, the devil is attacking your prayer life. No, I'm too tired so I can't pray. I'm too busy. I have so much to do I can't pray. Uh, you are having the equation the wrong way. Amen. Stop talking to people. They don't understand. Mm. Somebody say amen. Stop talking to people. They don't understand. There comes a point where, where human ability goes so far. And then you must go to your daddy who is preparing you for what he has for you. He knows where he's preparing you um, to go, so then he will, he, will, he will empower you to get there. Somebody say hallelujah. How the enemy attacks your prayer life and your destiny. Uh, I give you a very, a very graphic understanding of it, and you will never forget it. I said constipation. Somebody say constipation. <laughs> you, see, you, thought, you thought you were crazy. I am crazy. Amen. Say constipation. Mm-hmm. The enemy will constipate you with sin, constipate you with sorrow, with the crowd, with the busyness of the crowd. Sometimes the anointing can be constipating. You are so full of yourself, you don't pour out to anybody. And then we also talked about the, the being, being stuffed with answered prayer. If there's one thing that I, I see in my life and the life of many believers, the moment we begin to see the breakthrough of God, we slow down. The moment we begin to see the answered prayer from yesterday being manifest, we slow down like, okay, everything's good. Let's chill now. Um, but when you have great vision, you keep praying. When you live for the moment, I got my, I got my answered prayer. Why pray again? But when you are living for beyond answered prayer and going towards what God has for you, then you know that I have received one of a thousand answered prayers. I need to keep praying in order to see the manifestation of the answered prayers that God has for me. Amen. So when you have vision, you don't stop praying. You keep praying. And that is the way you will fulfill your destiny and die empty. Somebody say amen. Today, God's word for you is dealing with tears that tarry. Got to say it right. Because in Africa, we say dealing with tear that tarry. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. A tear is a weed, right? Tears are, or, or weeds in the Bible. And many of us deal with, all of us deal with this. So this message is not for your neighbor. Say it's for me. Amen. We all deal with, with tears in our life. You know, the Bible says that God made man perfect, but man has gone after his own devices. So God made us perfect. He put everything in place. And then we're like, God, this is too good. And so I'm moving on. Mm. And then we found sin. And then we entertained sin. And then we, we, got, we, got, we got caught up in sin. Or uh, you are experiencing the pain of somebody's disobedience. Somebody did not obey God. Someone did not honor God. Someone did something to you or someone did not do what they were supposed to do. So for the rest of your life, you are dealing with a tear that you did not sow. You love the Lord and you have sown the word of God in your life. But once in a while, you begin to see tears popping up that you thought were already cut down and burnt off. And so there are the tears that are tiring. They are always there. And there's something. If you deal with one thing, here comes another. It's like there's always something you are trying to quench. And many believers can get very frustrated with this. 
I am saved. Why am I going through trouble? Uh, but Jesus did say that in this life you will have trouble. Trouble is not, it's not the absence of the anointing. Trouble is not the absence of, of you walking with God. Trouble is not necessarily always about disobedience. You can be walking with God and sweet in the anointing and have trouble come your way. And so today, I, I want to encourage you and push you to, to a, a, a place of understanding tears so that our response to it will make us stronger instead of defeat us. Somebody say amen. You know, life is, is, uh, is, is not perfect. No one is perfect, right? Nothing in life is perfect. Nothing in life is perfect. I know you, you, you believe you are the perfect husband and the perfect wife. No, you are not perfect. Amen. Should I ask your wife or husband? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and then the anointing went down. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is a practical thing about life that life is not perfect. Christians, we were promised at the, at, at the altar that the day you give your life to Jesus Christ, everything is gone away. You are now free of the woes of life. You're like, that's a great deal. I want that. And then in the first six months, you were on a supernatural high. Or, I mean, everything was just going higher and higher. And then God said, it's time to grow up. And the devil said, oh, really? And then you're like, no, 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 no. Uh, this is not what I signed up for. Well, they lie to you. Somebody say amen. The walk of life naturally is not perfect. It is not perfect. It is not perfect. Somebody say amen. Now your spirit is made perfect, but your flesh is not. So the very combination of those two, a negative times a positive, is a negative. There's always something to work out. Somebody say amen. Let's not get it twisted that because we are in Christ, there will be no tribulation. And don't get it twisted that when somebody is going through a tribulation, and that means that they are less anointed than you. The idea, oh my God, they're always going through. Do you know what God is working through them? Do you know what God is processing them through? I mean, Jeremiah would have been the, the, the most sinful and the most the most uh, disobedient man of God. He was called the weeping prophet. He was always crying about something. David, why so downcast all my soul? Put your hope in God. I mean, he was always being chased around. So don't look at the life of people and conclude that because of adversity, they are not walking with God. Somebody say Amen. So life is not perfect. We all go through issues. Things happen. Things happen. The, 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 the thing is, how do you respond to them? That's the key, right? We have fixed the standard. Everybody goes through some. So because I go through something doesn't mean that I'm not walking with God. But the question is, how do I respond to what I'm going through? Through. Now, can I, can I say something? It's, it's, it's kind of like a pet peeve principle all mixed, all, all mixed together. One of the rules of life, rules of leadership, rules of being a believer, is that because I know you are not perfect and I know I'm not perfect, when I come to you, I come, with you, I come to you with affirmation and a thank you first. Make that a principle of your life. Even, even, even if... Uh, um, uh, this place was painted perfectly and you saw a spot, your first response should not be, oh, look at that spot. No one is perfect. So can you please affirm my positive? Because I know I got issues. You don't need to remind me of my issues. We all need a thank you. We all need an affirmation. Yo, man, the paint job looks amazing. Everything. Man, this is some work done that's awesome then come back two weeks later oh you know what as I was walking through I found a little spot that we missed can we touch it up that's how you do it your first response can be oh you did a great job but you know the moment the bud comes in everything is negative right <laughs> it's gone it's, it's gone bad and so on that note let me let me let me add this other principle it may help you when, when there's something you want to talk about with people, 
Okay, let's say you said, you know what? I thank you for doing this. I'm willing to help you. Don't use but. Say end. Say end. Say end. Okay. I really, really want to help you, Nana Butler. Like you are a great man of God, and I really want to help you. And um, I'm busy this weekend, so I cannot. The moment I say you are a great man of God, you are awesome, but I cannot help you. But means everything that comes before is, is negated. So I appreciate you. I thank you. And I need you to improve this. So the person feels affirmed and is now more excited to correct. But if you come at somebody with yap, 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 negative, boom, I mean, source gets drawn. You don't appreciate me. All the things I've done, I miss one spot. I do everything for you. I miss one spot. Now everything is evil. Yeah? To save your marriage. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. The thing is, life is not perfect, and God has made provision for us to win. Oh, wow, this is cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to praise God for this. In my notes, I have it here. Life is not perfect, and, I'm, and, and God has made provision for us to win. I have made it such a principle of my life that even without knowing, I put end. Because I could have said, life is not perfect. And by God, I know life is not perfect, and God has made provision for us to win. Both are correct. Somebody say amen. Matthew 13, verse number 24. Bible says that another parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Verse 26. But when the grain had sprouted, oh, or when the wheat had sprouted and, and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do, do you want us to gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the wheat unto the harvest, and at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, mm, first gather the tares and bind in the bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Somebody say amen. As I was reading this, I'm going to go off topic a little bit. As I was reading this, uh, just impressing my spirit, it was those that were working with the seed that asked him, what do you want us to do with the seed, with the, with the tares? And then he said, uh, don't worry about it. When it's time for harvesters, I'll let the reapers deal with it. There are some things that you are inviting people in your life to deal with that are not equipped to deal with it. The reapers are the ones supposed to handle the tares. If you let somebody who is meant to sow... <clears throat> Come to uproot. They will uproot. They will uproot everything. They will mess up everything. They don't know the difference. They don't know the difference between God molding you and, and an attack of the enemy. They don't know the difference between uh, 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 what God is preparing you and, and what the enemy is doing. They don't know the, the difference between work and rest. They don't know what God has put in your spirit. You can't be entrusting anybody, especially at the time of germination, at the time of a vision. We just prayed, oh God, let the gift come alive. And then you introduce someone in your life thinking that they will bring peace, thinking they will deal with their tears, they don't know because they all look the same. Be careful who you invite into your life. The reapers will deal with them. The reapers will deal with the tears. God has assigned people in your life, uh, people that will speak into you, people that will stand with you to walk with you. Don't just invite anybody. You know what? You know what? This is what I'm going through. Why are you telling everybody your business? This is what I'm going through. This, everybody knows your business, but you think it's a secret. It is no longer a secret if two people know it. 
not even one, not even three. If two people know it, your secret, if I tell you it is no longer a secret, because you're going to tell your mom, hey, it's a secret. Just between you and I. Don't tell nobody. Okay, it's a secret. Then she goes somewhere. No, let's pray about this. It's a secret. So everybody in the room knows the secret, but we all think it's a secret. Don't entrust valuable jewels to swine. Don't entrust valuable giftings of God and ideas and, and, and don't entrust your prayer time. Don't and, and try and trust the, 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 the gift of God and the ability of God in your life to people to, because they will mess it up. It's like me asking my, 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 my daughters to go into my food pantry and arrange it or, or go to my desk and arrange it. They are not equipped. They cannot handle it. I don't know where I'm going here, so receive it as the Lord speaks. There are people in your life that are not qualified to handle what God is taking you through. They will uproot everything they think is a tear, and it will be what God has planted, and they will gladly uproot it because they like it clean. Mm. Hallelujah. All right, now to the regularly scheduled message. Wheat and tears look alike. But at the end of it, by their fruits, you shall know them. Say with me, by their fruits, you shall know them. One more time. By their fruits, you shall know them. And so the, the, the way to, 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 to understand what, what a weed is and what, uh, uh, what the actual weed is, is, is time. Sometimes time must prove it. Somebody say amen. Time will prove it and, and it, will, it will let you know what is a fruit and what is not? But there's one thing that I want to emphasize that discernment of the Holy Spirit will let you know them. Discernment of the Holy Spirit will let you know who is with you and who is not. Will let you know who is right and who is not. That's why you cannot, again, be constipated by the crowd. Because too many people talking, you cannot hear um, the Spirit of God. Discernment of Spirit is so important. If you don't, listen, I, I mean, in, in, in America, it may be easier, but you know, I, I, got, I got signs, I, got, I, I can tell. When you are in Saudi Arabia and you're a missionary, you better have discernment of spirit and, and better hear from God. Because a left turn, <laughs> when you're supposed to make a right turn, could be the end of the ministry. Somebody say amen. It could be a big difference. But discernment of spirit will let you know, you know, uh, 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 how, how, how somebody is or whether you are supposed to walk together. Somebody say amen. Listen, listen, I, as, as pastor, I have to walk in discernment. Because not everybody that, that smiles is smiling. Somebody say amen. And, 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 and even though, and this is, the, this is the second part of it, even though you can tell by discernment who is and who's not, doesn't mean you whoop out the machete and start chopping things off. For everything, there is a time. For everything, there is a season. You, the Lord will let you know if it is time to snap, snap, or sometimes he says, let the tares grow with the wheat. Oh, God, why? This thing has been here for too long. I just don't want this. And God is like, let them grow. Mm. Do you know how, many, how, long, how long David knew that Absalom was fighting against him? You think, he, you think he was ignorant? He knew. The guy had a chair outside his castle. I mean, <laughs> he was seated down outside his castle. And the king always has his informants, right? So, yo, yo, King David, how are you doing today? You good? Okay, yeah, here's your breakfast. But wait, did you know that Absalom? I know, I know. Every single day, they informed him that Absalom was back. He was aware. But sometimes in your life, as God is processing you, you learn to be strong in spite of the tears. Many of us have focused our energy on the tears. Oh my God, so many tears. And, and the enemy is more than happy to keep planting in front of you. Oh my God, uh, tears. And you never tend to the wheat. And then when it comes time for harvest, you are so tired and so exhausted, you cannot harvest. Hallelujah. 
It is time to walk in discernment. If you don't have discernment, pray in the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord, give me discernment. By reason of use, being able to tell the difference between good and evil. Be able to tell that mm, everything looks perfect here, but something is not right. You can sense it when you are driving through towns. Oh, what was that? When you fly into a place, whoa, what was that? You can tell by neighbor there's a spirit that over. Be discerning. Be discerning with people. Now, there's the difference between discernment and suspicion. Hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, remember that? Do you want to that? No, no, not everything. <laughs> oh, church folk, isn't God good? <laughs> There's a big difference, okay? The sermon is an inner knowing confirmed by the Holy Spirit. And you will know. You will know. And, 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 and by reason of use, maybe one time you miss it, then you get it right. Oh, so when God is trying to speak to me about not going left, he shows me a red light. Or maybe for you, he shows you a green light. So oh, green light means don't go left. You record it. You grow. The next time you see a, 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 a green light, you say, okay, don't go left. Go right. Hmm. It didn't work this time. Oh, what does green light mean? Oh, maybe it means don't go left, don't go right. It means keep going forward. You will learn by spending time with God. It is not just, oh, I have this sermon of spirit. No, no it is practice because sometimes you miss it. No one is perfect. When it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, no one is perfect. Prophets get excited. I see this. Yeah, that's correct. I see this. That's correct. I see uh, Oh, prophet. Mm, this one. <laughs> what you are seeing? <laughs> what you are seeing? <laughs> it's not true. It's okay. It's, 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 it's all together. You can't discount the prophetic word because he missed one out of 17. You see what I'm saying? We're human. The wheat and the tares look alike, but the difference comes at the harvest. You look for wheat and you can see the difference there. Let time develop, but the discernment of spirit is so key because there are some things that um, are troubling you right now, and, and this is very unchristian to say, um, but that are right now that are supposed to make you stronger. Now, I'm not saying admit every, every ill of the enemy as, oh my God, God is trying to teach me something. Um, but there are, there, are, there, are, there are things in your life um, that go places there in order for you to grow. If you read, if you, if you read Romans, Paul talks about uh, us Gentiles being grafted in in order to make Israel jealous. So the only, I mean... The main reason that we are grafted in is to provoke someone to jealousy. There are things that God will put in your life. You're like, I don't get this. I don't get this annoying neighbor always, always, always playing the music at 2 o'clock. I don't get it. Maybe God is trying to get God is trying to tell you to wake up at 2 o'clock to pray. Maybe if you start praying at 2 o'clock, the music will shut off. God tried the pastor. He tried your husband, tried your wife, tried your friends, and the God is saying, wake up at two, but you won't. But the music by the annoying neighbor will not stop until you wake up and pray. When I mention tears, and I think it's important to, to, to say this now, when I mention tears, I'm not talking about sin. Hear me? Because if it was sin, it would have killed the wheat. It is not sin. Sin comes to kill. Oh, well, hey, hey, pastor said, you know, the tears. I know this is ungodly, but, you know, let them grow together. No, you cannot mix light and darkness. You can't mix pure and unpure, man. I'm not talking about sin you get rid of. But there are some things in your life. Paul said that, I pray the Lord that he remove the thorn of my flesh. Um, but how did God respond? My grace is sufficient unto you. Stop fighting tears. Stop complaining about tears. Oh my God, my life is always focused on the wheat. It is part of life. His grace is sufficient unto you. Do you see that the tares and the wheat both grow in the same soil? And the reason why we panic, the reason why you are fighting the tares and that you are not supposed to fight is because you think that's not enough. 
It's taken away from me. It's taken away from me. You know, I can't sleep and I can't do this. And so you are losing the focus of what is there for. Um, but when God takes you through, when God allows it, he has made enough provision that the wheat will bear its fruit. And the tear will also do its thing. At the end of it, you will get what you need. Somebody say amen. God has made provision for you. Stop fighting people because you think they are tears in your life. Oh my God, that new person they hired at the job. Uh, mm. Because you all think now, now the person has favor with the boss or they are going to take your place. And so now you start fighting them. Why don't you do better? Even, 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 even better. Why don't you begin your own business? Maybe that's what God is trying to tell you. Praise the Lord. Now we can shun the hallelujah. <laughs> the maturity of a believer. Oh, it's got, it's got, it's got too much tenor. Give me some bass, amen. Want to be an old time preacher. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. The maturity of a believer can be found in how in the face of opposition and discouragement, they do not panic and lose control. Your maturity will be determined by when things are going wrong, you keep your cool. You don't fight tears. You don't turn your attention to on what is wrong and every time everything is wrong. That's why the, the, out of the disciples, only Peter walked on water because they were completely, oh my God, it's a ghost. Oh my God, we're going to die. And they were focused on the wrong thing instead of saying it is Jesus. Even after Peter said, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come. He says, it is me. Come. They were like, mm-hmm. Yeah, right? <laughs> They did not know their master's voice. Mm. This message is taking me all over the place. I feel like I can preach for three hours. Should I do it? Hey, yeah, right? The same people that said do it. Pastor! 1202. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't lose control in the face of trouble. Don't panic. A sign of your maturity is that when things are not perfect, you are still strong in the Lord. Those who panic are those who are afraid that the tares are going to take all the nutrients from the ground and choke me out. No, no, no. You will not choke me out. Come on. Welcome. Come. Come. Sit. There has been times I've been in service, ministering somewhere, and you, you see, okay, someone comes in as a witch. What are we going to do? All right, everybody get up, <laughs> release your fire that way. No, you can't do nothing. You are a tear. See, there comes a time to deal with it and a time not to deal with it. You just don't go crazy. Oh, my God, that's a witch in this place. Where's the anointing oil? Oh, my God, I receive it and go. You don't do that. Calm down. You got the Holy Ghost. This is the house of God. Daddy is in charge. Don't panic when things come into your life as tears uh, and feel that like you are out of control. Just rest in the Lord. Somebody say amen. Rest in the Lord. Let the Lord be the one that empowers you through it. But don't panic. Somebody say amen. I'm saying this because you had tears in your life. You have tears in your life right now. And you will have tears in your life. Because the tears did not come out until harvest time. And he said, and the kingdom of God is as this, right? That's talking about the church and Christ coming for his people. So until Christ comes for us, <laughs> until the harvest time where there's a separation of the wheat from the tares, you always have a tear around. Is that okay? It is a matter of fact. It is the truth. You can change it. 
what you must do is now begin to be strengthened of the Lord. And don't panic when things don't go your way. Don't, don't, don't panic when things are introduced in your life that, that throws a wrench into it. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. We got this. Holy Ghost, turn around. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He knows all things. He is all powerful. My daddy got this. It is well. I don't have to be afraid. Because Jesus is in control. He has made room for it. He, he is the one that agreed and said, let the wheat and the tares grow together. If that's what he wants, let him do it. But one thing I know is that I will have everything I need and nothing I need will be taken away from me. Somebody say amen. John the, John the Baptist said, a man cannot receive anything unless it is given to him from above. The day I caught the revelation and that the man cannot receive anything unless it is given to him from above. I'm like, why am I fighting? Why am I fighting? My begging and my scratching is not going to make God give it to me. But when God gives it to me, no one can take it from me. So do your worst. Do what you got to do. I mean, yell, backbite, lie about me. Do, yeah, you're a tear. You're supposed to do that. But that does not make me panic. That has to move me. I am rooted and I'm grounded in Christ. Somebody say amen. The second thing I want you to know is that, uh, and I mentioned that they grow in the same soil. The, the third thing is that the tares are, were sown while the men slept. Mm. <laughs> the tares were sown while the men slept. And, and I, I, can give you, I can give you a very spiritual answer right now. Thou shalt not sleep. Hey, it is important for you to be awake. Uh, be alert uh, because your enemy uh, is rolling around like a lion. Uh, don't sleep. Uh, no, but, but, but the practical thing about life is that you're going to sleep. <laughs> you need sleep. <laughs> you will sleep. Stay awake for eight days. Eventually you will sleep. And, and the revelation God wants us to get from that is that the enemy attacks during regular, normal day hours. The devil doesn't only wait till night to attack, uh, to, 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 to attack you. He, he attacks every single day during your normal life. A flat tire, you are awake. He didn't wait till the evening. Sneak into the backyard. You were driving. You were praying in tongues, actually, on your way to work. You have a flat tire. So what? Fix it. Don't panic. Fix it. The enemy attacks us. Tears are sown. But it happens during every single day of our life. Let your confidence be in God. That's what God is telling us today. That things will happen. It is part of life to have issues. But I am not moved and I'm not worried. I celebrate and I laugh and I smile and I rejoice always. Because what can man do to me? See, you are, you are, you are upset at people for not acting right. I see people act right. You are upset at the world. Oh, my God. Oh, this, uh, this, this country uh, and politics. Uh, and look at the global things uh, that are going on. I, you spend so much time yapping about that, but you don't pray. You are complaining about tears instead of working on wheat. Why don't you answer the cry of the Lord? The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Why don't you answer that answer, I mean that question, instead of complaining about the world going bad? Because the world will get worse. It will get worse. So none of your political action and yapping and complaining is going to change anything if you're talking about tears. But if my people who are called by my name who humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will heal the land. There are tears the enemy will place in your life that will just distract you from the focus of God. Somebody say amen. And the enemy attacks, like I was saying earlier, every normal part of life. Always. So don't be afraid of him. Somebody say amen. Don't be afraid of the enemy. The maturity of a believer, 
the maturity of a believer can be found in his or, his or her ability to not waver at the signs of trouble. And here's the key part. And keep going on. Some people park when things go bad. Stop. Jesus, time out. We can do this right now. We got a situation to deal with here. You spend three months, four hours, ten days dealing with that situation instead of going on with Jesus. You stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't see when you realize that tears are part of life, it's like that traffic light you you drive through every day. It's red every day. Okay. Go on. Don't stop because of a tear. Don't stop because someone did something. Don't stop. Just keep pressing on because if it is not that light, it will be another light. Somebody say amen. Christians, I know I know won't work in the in the in the prosperity and the increase and the glory unto glory. But part part of life is trouble. Part of life is the tears. And if you if you allow the tears to slow you down then you don't even need to fight any spiritual battle. The devil has won. If tears alone in your life can shut down you, then, then forget about praying because you already shut down. But the things that everybody goes through, but the situations that everybody faces when they are asleep, when they are awake, it, it is part of life. So don't be shut down by the tears of the enemy. Don't be shut down. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hear this, church. The tears stayed unto the end. Did they not? Verse number 30. Let's go there. Verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in the bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Somebody say, I rejoice in my salvation. Say, I rejoice in my salvation. Say it again, I rejoice in my salvation. I do not fear the wicked. I do not fear what happens around me. I rejoice in my salvation. As a believer, I want to encourage you today and that the tears may tarry and tears may be there, but, but I rejoice in my salvation. You see, because they are supposed to be there, whether they are there or not, I don't care because it is it's them. They should do what they do, um, but I rejoice in my salvation. I rejoice in my salvation. I rejoice in my salvation, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. I recourse at the end of it, um, the tears are going to be separated and burnt, uh, um, but I'm going to go on with my Lord. Uh, and so I'm not going to let them stop me from getting to harvest. Don't let problems and situations in life keep you from getting to harvest. Keep you from bearing fruit. Bible says that and some of the seed fell among thorns. You realize that this is different. The worm that fell among thorns was seed that was thrown into thorns. But what Jesus is talking about here is that you were planted and rooted and then the tares came. Whose house is it? It's your house. You were there planted before the enemy came and so tares. So they have no power to choke you out. Because this is your land. When the seed were put into thorns, the thorns were already growing. The cares of this world choked it out. But you are rooted and planted in God. So no matter what the enemy does by day or by night, it does not affect me and keep me from getting to harvest. Somebody say amen. I encourage you, press on and keep moving forward. Press on and don't stop. Don't see as trouble what everybody complains as trouble. Because in the world, people complain a lot. Oh, look at this, and look at that, and look at even good things people complain about. Don't let that be your portion. Keep pressing on. Somebody say amen. Habakkuk. Go to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk, chapter 3. One of my favorite verses, Habakkuk, chapter 3. Mm. Habakkuk. How do you guys say it? Habakkuk. Yep, Habakkuk, yep. See, 
See, I have an advantage you don't know. I can say it your way, and I can say it my way. Hallelujah. I know you can say my way, go mess it up. <laughs> Habakkuk. <laughs> Habakkuk chapter 3. Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. There you go, Habakkuk chapter 3. The maturity of the believer can be found in his or her ability to turn a blatant accusation and attack into a victory song. I want to push you past seeing tears. Push you past feeling the weight of tears and arising above it and saying that nothing of the enemy is going to stop me from rejoicing. The maturity of the believer is found when, they, when you, you see the attack coming, you know who is doing it, and you keep smiling and say, and the Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? You are, bring it. I see you coming. Come on. Jesus said in Gethsemane, uh, why are you not praying with me for an hour? Why is it blah, blah, blah? He did all that and says, uh, let us go for the accuser is coming. He's like, it's coming. The tear is coming. The situation is coming. But I rejoice in the Lord. Believers, we stop when we see accusation coming. Or when accusation comes at us or the enemy attacks us, we just shut down everything. Oh my God, woe is me. No. The mature believer will say, okay, bring it on. Angels of God, you ready for another round? Let's do this. And then you move forward boldly. Some of us act like we don't have a home. We act like we don't have a heavenly daddy. The great I am that I am, able to move mountains, able to make a way where there seems to be no way, able to make hair grow out of bone. But God is able. And so tears, tears are just cobwebs. Just, yeah, yeah, get out of my, just move on. But don't lose your joy. Um, don't lose the strength of God. Uh, don't stop moving. Please get to harvest. Because harvest is when we get to tell the difference between you and them. So press on. Press on. In the face of tears, press on. Somebody say amen. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse number 17 says that, Though the fig tree may not blossom. Mm. You see? Uh, Holy Ghost. There is, there is, there is, there is, there is that place, right? Just on that first phrase, though the fig tree may not blossom. The very first example that comes to mind is when Jesus, right, cursed the fig tree, right? That's where many believers are stuck. Oh my God, it's not working. The fig tree is not blossoming. I curse you. I speak to you. I, uh, but he says, though the fig tree does not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and then be no herd in the stalls. Next verse. Blue, blue, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Somebody say amen. I will not stop. I will not stop. So instead of being like, you know what, fig tree, you this and you that. And how come you're not bearing fruit? You're supposed to, you're supposed to give me some money. Somebody give me that promotion. You said you do. Forget about that and rejoice in the Lord. Press on with your God. I will rejoice in the Lord Almighty. Though the stores be empty, there's no more chicken. There's no more beef. There's no more. There's nothing else to eat. I will yet rejoice in the Lord my God. I've learned to abound and, and both to be abased. When I don't have it is fine. I rejoice. When I have, I rejoice. I am not stopped by tears. So the tears can tarry forever if they want. Mm. Remember Smith Wigglesworth? Smith was a mighty man of God. Healing, legs growing. But I you know he had a serious kidney issue. Whilst he's preaching, he has to go to the bathroom and change himself because blood. So how can God, you have called me uh, to heal the sick and transform lives and bring the healing power by myself? His daughter had a hearing problem. How to use a uh, hearing horn to hear him preach. 
If you part, I have the kidney issue. If you part, I God, why don't you heal my daughter? I'm not going to preach anymore unless you heal my daughter. If you part there, you will not do anything for God. Situations come in life. Stop making it seem like yours is the worst ever. Oh my gosh, I can't believe. Listen, there is no temptation that has come to you that is not common to man. <laughs> but the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So be encouraged. Don't let tears stop you. Don't let tears stop you. Don't let the things the enemy puts in your life stop. There will come a time. Bible says that do not be wary in well doing. For in due season, you will reap if you don't lose her. This in due season always comes. Harvest time will always come. Listen, let your problems come with you. Let them come. Right? God will take some away. God will let some grow. It's okay. But when we get to the Red Sea, we're going to see who we're going to cross. Egypt may chase you. Oh my God, here comes Egypt, we're going to die, Moses, look what we did. But little did they know that at the Red Sea, they were going to cross and Egypt will stay. At the point of harvest, the weeds will be burnt and the fruit will come alive. At, at the harvest time, at the maturity of your gift, at the fullness of your obedience, my God. Because God will put somebody in your life and you're like, God, this is cruel and unusual punishment. Why are you doing this to me? I have served you all my life. They don't appreciate me. They don't like me. Look, Lord, I am serving you. Why? But listen, at the point of your obedience, when your obedience is full, at the place of maturity, God will reward you. At the place of maturity, God will reward you. So stop complaining about the person or the situation and just keep focusing on God. And keep rejoicing and keep moving forward. The tears will not stop you. Somebody say amen. amen. If anything, let them make you stronger. Let them challenge you. I like gardening, right? And my, I have my fence, my, my plants at the fence. I have, I have the bottom cover, but at the fence. I realized that the plants that were at the fence grew taller. Do you know why? The fence is like, oh, really? Huh? Oh, really? Huh? There is that thing going on. They are looking for sunlight. And so the, the, the fence is blocking the fullness of their sunlight. And so then they must grow taller. Oh, God, tear down the... God says, grow taller. The fence may never go because it belongs to the neighbor. Amen? It's not going anywhere. <laughs> the fence will remain. But I will grow taller. And do you know what I realized? I realized that um, the ones that were by the fence took longer to bear fruit than the ones in the front. The front had all the sunlight. So they were like, pop, pop, pop. They were just bursting and going. But the ones in the back had to grow taller, but then when these guys were done, ah, it's my time now. Listen, due season will always come. I serve a God that is too good to abandon me because of a tear. I serve a God that is too good to, to, to just leave me and say, oh, well, sorry, no. And the tears may come from daddy, from mommy, from your cousin, and from work, from whatever. But it doesn't matter where it comes from. My God will deliver me. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Oh, listen, put some dancing in your feet. Where is your victory song? Where is your victory dance? And that in the face of adversity, you are like, it's on, Jesus, it's on. Let's do this. If I could dance, I would dance. But I can't dance, I can't jump out. Amen. It's called the... the <laughs> Pentecostal pogo stick. <laughs> Don't let it stop you. Make it a dance. I had a sign in my pastor's office that said, if you stumble, make it part of the dance. When things come your way that want to slow you down, get stronger. Let me give you this example and then I'm going to let you go. When you go to the gym, right? Life is like a gym. You go there and you can live like 20 pounds, right? There's always that guy, right? 
<laughs> Last time I went to the gym, I saw this guy, man. Like, I bet you had like 600 pounds here, a thousand pounds. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> <Whoa>! <laughs> I'm like, dude, it is not that serious. <laughs> it is not that serious. Unless you're going to a hand not like a physical combat <laughs> with your name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is not that necessary, okay? But if all you can lift is 15 pounds, okay, you lift it. And somebody comes around, the enemy comes around and sows a tear and puts 10 pounds, 10 pounds. At first, what do you do? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But when you press through, the enemy adds more. Who is getting stronger? So don't fight the attacks of the enemy. Stand strong. Obey God. The Lord will repel, obviously, we contend in faith and prayer and all that. But I'm saying that in your emotions, don't park there. Don't complain about what's coming at me. Eventually, the, the enemy realized that every time I throw a tear at him, it gets stronger. I throw a tear in her life. She prays more. She gives more. She worships more. She dances more. This is having the opposite effect that I intended. I'm out. But if the enemy can throw it at you and it work, I was like, okay, staples. That was easy. Poof. Every single time the enemy will push that button. But when the enemy brings you, you keep praying. Bring it on. Then realize you're cut, you're strong in the Lord. And the enemy is like, uh-uh, that's not what I want. So tears will come in your life. Issues will come. But I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord because my God is great. My God is powerful. My God will not let, I believe that my God will not punish me for someone's foolishness. Somebody needed to hear that. God will not punish you because of someone's foolishness. Some people may, may do things, may disobey God and put you in a situation with tears. But it's all right. Your daddy is a vine dresser. Your daddy, he's got you, man. He's got you. It's just a tear. Just, just, just trust in him. Believe in him.